Kia ora. In the headlines, 200 Whanganui residents made it clear at last night's public meeting they are not happy with a convicted sex offender living in their midst, even under monitoring. Officials say they have to release Stuart Murray Wilson despite his high-risk status as he's done his time. Rehabilitation advocate Kim Workman told New Zealand's REMA that we can't be naive about public safety. Any engagement has to be probably under the advice of a local clinical psychologist. Sometimes these, these characters are highly manipulative. All my instincts and all my judgment and all my knowledge would say that he's not capable of rehabilitation, but I have no way of knowing. And, you know, I don't think there's any evidence that anybody can produce that he has, has been rehabilitated or that he's remorseful. Three controversial bills were pulled from Parliament's members' ballot today. They proposed to change the powers of the Reserve Bank, make council-controlled organisations transparent and extend the in-work tax credits. Around 30 MPs have met today as part of Maggie Barry's parliamentary group on palliative care, which she is promoting as an alternative to euthanasia. The Greens' Kevin Haig is among opposition politicians claiming the cross-party meeting was hijacked by an anti-euthanasia agenda. But while she has signalled her intentions to vote against Labour MP's Marion Street's bill legalising voluntary euthanasia, Maggie Barry denies breaking cross-party rules. All parties were invited and I think the wider issues around the care of people with dementia and palliative care are of great concern to New Zealanders. She pointed out palliative care is of a high standard in New Zealand and suggests euthanasia shouldn't even be considered. There is a real risk that you think that there's nothing that's going to help you and so you want to end it all, you drag someone else into that and frankly that would be a burden that many of us could not withstand. Schools are questioning what students can say online about them. Memes are internet generated pictures to which people can add cheeky captions and students at Auckland's Westlake Boys High School have done so at the expense of their teachers. The students are being told the school won't tolerate disrespect towards staff in a public forum. The Minister of Labour is to investigate claims that immigrants are being exploited and underpaid by small business owners. Kate Wilkinson says there's been progress in some sectors but acknowledged it's a tricky area that often relies on third party reporting. The employee doesn't want to make a complaint because perhaps they might be working illegally. The employer won't be able to let us know if they're breaching the legislation either. There'll be another inquest regarding the CTV building collapse which pancaked in the February 22nd quake last year. Coroner Gordon Martinga will conduct the inquest into 115 deaths with an emphasis on six victims who died after surviving the initial collapse. Across the Tasman, there's applause for the High Court's ruling that the Gillard government's world-first laws on plain packaging for cigarettes are constitutionally valid. The Australian Council on Smoking and Health believes this will have global ramifications, as President Mike Daub told New Zealand's REMA. The tobacco industry has opposed this measure more fiercely than anything I've seen in 40 years of campaigning. That tells us just how important they think packaging is. The tobacco industry has lost the last vehicle it had for promoting its products, and the most important impact of this measure is going to be with kids. The US has welcomed Syria's suspension from the 57-member Organization of Islamic Cooperation. Participants agreed al-Assad's regime needs to end the violence against its citizens. <coughs> The British government's threat to arrest Julian Assange inside London's Ecuadorian embassy is being called foolish. The WikiLeaks founder will hear tomorrow if Ecuador will grant him asylum as he tries to avoid sex assault allegations in Sweden. And before we go, results of the annual James Dyson Awards. The finalist designs were a waterproof hearing aid, a tree harvester for sustainable forestry and a self-inflating life jacket for safer free diving. Massey Uni's Nick Ross was declared the winner with his tree harvester design. Head judge David Lovegrove says they're great inventions. The Dyson philosophy is really we've got to look at designs that solve a problem. These students are really top of the game at design. Kanui na karare matua, mai te fare korero o rima, mauri ora.